Hello everyone, welcome back to PJ Chen Design Channel. This channel is about sharing Rhino 3D knowledge to students and professionals, learning various Rhino 3D techniques. Today what we like to do is to making this uh, tire ring. It's inspired by car tire and it has been a big inspiration for a lot of men's jewelry. Are you ready? Let's get started. Before we start model this ring, let's talk about some detail about the pattern. I would like to use the pattern as, as simple as po uh, possible and try to avoid too much the sharp angle. Uh, something like this, I try to fit it a little bit uh, to avoid the sharp angle, but you don't want to pick up the pattern that's too pointed. And for men's jewelry, it's not necessary to put a lot of stone in there. I just put it there for the decoration. So we won't talk about the stone part, but just about the tire model. Let's take a look on the Google search image. A uh, few things you may want to avoid. First of all, uh, the tire pattern has coming to the point because that might cause the casting issue. This one is not too bad, but the pattern is too complicated. So what we like to do is pick up some pattern is uh, simpler and doesn't have too much pointed uh, angle. So we are not looking at the actual tire. We want to look at those black and white image. You can click on any of them and take a look on the detail or usually go in view more. So they are some a very good one like this one is way too complicated try not to use it this one you may able to simplify okay so try not to take something like this is already have some style on it then let's go back to rhino we want to start at front view let's draw a circle uh, center is at zero for diameter let's type it 16 here all right, and then let's go to the right view and this time we want to make a profile. The profile is the tire um, basically outline. So what I like to do is to create a square roughly. You don't want to get it too wide. I think men's jewelry, if you over a millimeter, it might be too much. Um, so somewhere around a millimeter will be great. The thickness right here, we want to set it up for roughly about three. This is still comfortable. If you get it more like a five millimeter, it may not be comfortable um, for men's jewelry. So I'm going to move this one to the center back to where our ring uh, circle is. So let's modify this. Um, area a little bit because I like it to be a comfort fit. So what I like to do is using the arc to kind of make the inside a little bit round. It's going to use this one to trim the rectangular that we just create. Okay. And then on the top, I would like to use the arc again to create something a little bit bigger in the depth and then use that to trim off the um, rectangular again so we're gonna trim off this one all right so although inside is already comfort fit it's not um, so comfortable on those angle so i'm gonna use the fitted curve to set it up for 0.8 in my case, uh, that's run off inside a little bit. All right. So on the top, I might also want to run it off as well. And you can change the uh, fitted radius to make whatever profile that you want. Once you're done everything, let's join it. And making this ring is very simple. We're going to use the commands called sweep one rail. And let's go ahead, go ahead to pick up the rail and the cross section. And let's click OK. 
All right, so you may wonder what is that black line over there? This black line is where the seam is. And this is really important that we move the seam to inside of a ring shank because that will affect the create UV curve if you have a seam is not right in the middle. Okay, so let's go ahead to use the command. It's living under the surface tool and you have this one is adjust close uh, surface seam. It will ask you to pick up the object. So let's pick up this object. We don't need to change both of them. So we want to do, let's guess, using the U. And then we want to make sure it's snapping into the quadrant. Okay, so now the seam is right in the middle. So the next step is we need to know where is the area we want to draw this tire. So let me go ahead to make a line right there and uh, make sure the line is really close to where the tangent area uh, on the top view. Let me go ahead to copy and paste and hide one of it so we can bring back later. All right, so let's pick up these two line and go ahead and use the trim and trim off the extra over there. All right, so the reason I'm doing this is because I need to know where is the area for my tire. So this will be the area that we are going to work with. The command we are going to use is leaving under the curve, curve from the object that you have create UV curve. So now what are you seeing here is the area of that surface and what is coming over here in this button and the top that is original, the whole ring area. And we only want to design in this um, rectangular area, but we have to keep all of them for the reference. Okay, so let's bring in the tire pattern by picture, um, picture comment or picture frame in Rhino 5. We want to bring in the command right here and the size doesn't matter at this point. We do want to have a clear image to trace with. So with this image, uh, let's go ahead to trace with the line. I like to use the red color. So let me create another layer and then I'll make this layer in the red color. So it's easier for us to see. All right, so I'm gonna use the straight uh, line work to create this. Sometimes you can hold the shift and you are able to um, make a straight line. And because this line is going to back to align with this. So make sure your uh, smart track is on and then you snapping into this point first and then you can move it back to snapping in here. Okay, so that's the first one. And I also want to track trace right here and holding this shift, coming back here, holding the shift again and coming back here. All right, so now I have this, I'm going to create another curve going from here to here. And because I want them to be parallel, so I'm just gonna use the gumball, drag it and hit the all key. So I will get those two is parallel. The way I'm going to create is just using the um, blend tool. I'm going to blend the curve from this point to this point. And then you can adjust it uh, to make it higher or lower or whatever do you want on your design, okay? So uh, let me go ahead to join those. To make it look more uniform, um, I was simply just making another copy by using the rotate tool and using the gumball to move it to this side. Okay, so let's use the move tool to be very accurate. 
and snapping into the line there all right so i got that one and i also just want to use the mirror tool to mirror the other one back here and kind of tilt it a little bit to fit in the design right there so at least they don't look like they all different at least they look really similar okay so now we have all of them just go ahead to select all the curve and let's use the trim tool to trim the extra and we're gonna have that one to trim off this one so now that's join all of them oops so now that's join all of them together all right so we no longer need this background uh, we can kind of delete it but before i delete it um, this background i would like to kind of um, mirror all the curve that we have to the other side just for the reference we're gonna change it the distance based on what we have but just want to get an idea for the proportion so that's mirror to the other side now let me delete the background so it's easier for you to see all right so now we got those two curves we're gonna move it close to our design and turn it 90 degree over there and move it somewhere to here all right so now you can scale bigger or smaller it really depends on how you like them close to the edge okay so i'm going to align them but before i do that i want to group those two and i want to pick up my rectangular uh, shape and let's do the horizontal center align and snapping into the midpoint so that way they will align close to the edge that i like all right so this look nice and then we are going to do one more things to do a test let's go ahead to using the array tool it's linear array and we're gonna array this guy how many of them i'm not so sure so let's try 25 first and the first reference point is any of the endpoint and you can kind of eyeball it for the distance that you like after you try a few times you find a perfect gap that you have a lot of time they don't end up exactly where to match the first one so i would like to do is instead of to to try to trim and uh, doing everything I would like to do just a 1d scale this rectangular so let's go ahead with the scale 1d scale and let's go ahead to make this snapping into the endpoint all right so we kind of stretch it a little bit um, to to back to our design but that's all right um, because this is the pattern so it, it doesn't affect too much next step let's go ahead to um, make it into solid so let's go into the solid tool extrude planar curve straight and i want them to be uh, on the both sides because i can actually have an intersection to the ring that we have and i don't want it to be like too thick because my ring is already three millimeter so let's go ahead to set it about 0.8 millimeter on each side okay so now we have this um, all we need to do is flow it back there before we flow it back we may want to do some fillet uh, on the edges uh, to make sure they are not too sharp first so let's go ahead to do this we're gonna go into the front view or right view on the top let's use the fillet and giving a little bit radius that's say 0.2 on all of them okay so now we have a fillet and double check to click on two of them and make sure that they are close poly surface okay 
Before you flow it back to the surface, one thing we wanted to do is we want the edge to be sm smooth. So this is kind of stick it out and it won't be comfortable for the ring. So you select everybody here, uh, not the curve there. And we're going to use the command is called cage edit. All right, we want to pick up on the bounding box and hit enter. The XYZ point at this point is four. What we need is actually Y, so we don't have to change anything here. And then very quickly, you are going to see something like this. All right, it's easier for us to see on the side view. I'm going to pick up the very end uh, at the right view, and let me scale it down like this. Try to get it as close as possible because that's showing like how much of the edge is going to hanging over there. All right, so now our shape has become taper. You can see from our perspective. Okay, uh, let me change this back to the black color. All right, so you probably see easier. So it, you kind of see it's become a little bit curved there, uh, tapered there. All right, so that will be comfortable for our ring. So let's group them. So you don't have to draw a window all the time. So let's hit uh, group them. And then let's flow this back. So to flow this back to the ring, I will need to have a surface. So let's go ahead to make this surface by surface from planar curve. All right, so the command we're going to use is under the transform, you have flow along the surface. We want to pick up this object and we want to pick up one of the corner and let's go ahead to pick up uh, one of the corner in the target. All right, so it looked very well, but just be double check it to make sure that the edges look really nice. All right, so we don't want this surface right there because we um, make a copy earlier and then let's go ahead to bring in the copy. So now we have this ring here, let's double check. Let's see the render view and see how they go. Um, this is the tire ring for today's demonstration. I hope you enjoy it. Please like and comment and share my video. That will really help me to reach more people and share my knowledge. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy it and see you next Monday.